Peace of the Lord be with you. I'm glad to reach you on this fourth Sunday of the season of Advent. Let's begin with the song, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number 22.
Today we're lighting the fourth Advent candle, a candle for love. Let's join in the response and then the, the four verses of the Advent song. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. Light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. And you will make for you a 
great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall affect them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Thank you. I'll start our psalm today in Psalm 89 on page 670. Please repeat the chorus. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Lord, I will sing your love forever. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Lord, Then you spoke in a vision to my, your faithful one, and said, I have set a crown on the one who is mighty. I have anointed him. My hand shall... Considered in her mind what sort of reading this might be. 
And the angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with the Lord. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I have no husband? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
that far from Samuel, it's hard to understand exactly what's going on there. Let's shoot back up a little bit. David, <clears throat> David is the second king in, in Israel. Sometime before that, people would come into the promised land, they prospered, and they had enough time to look around at other nations and other people, and they saw that some of the big ones had invented a new thing in the world, a king. A king. A guy at the top who ruled over them. And, and so they, they said to their rulers, hey, we want a king. We want a king. And God said, oh, you don't want a king. Kings do awful things. A king will invent the IRS. <laughs> but they insisted they wanted a king. So God gave them a king. And he turned out to be terrible. His name was Saul. And he did invent the IRS. And he did all kinds of other things. And finally, God went out and found a, a shepherd boy named David. And he brought David to a sequence of, of battles and, and events to become the king. And David had to fight off all of his opponents, and he's finally done. Just like Lars Red, the king was at rest. He was at rest. He was retired. Now, sometimes when people retire, they're not quite done. David wasn't quite done. He had already constructed a big palace in Jerusalem. And so he decided that he would build God a temple. It was his retirement project. So, so there he is. He's going to he's thinking about this, this temple. And he, he emails Nathan and asks him, what do you think? What do you think, Nathan? Shall we have a temple? Now, I'll tell you something about my profession. There is no clergy in history who has ever said no to a building project. <laughs> Who's never said, no, I don't want to build a bigger and better church, temple, whatever. So, David gets to go. You know, he, he's not feeling totally accomplished as a king, I think. He has this one more thing he wants to accomplish. And, and he's already looking at it. I can imagine him sitting down with an architect, going over the plans. And then, and God comes to him in a dream. Because he forgot one thing, didn't he? I know you, you saw this. He forgot one thing. He forgot to ask for God. And it turns out God, God's not that interested in having a time. Because God doesn't really care about it. Doesn't care about buildings at all. In fact, this is what God says. Did I ever ask you for a temple? Ever ask? Do you ever get somebody who gives you a really big, expensive present that you don't want? And you have to pretend you're excited, but really you're thinking, did I ever ask you for this? Did I ever ask you for a temple? Are you the one to build me a temple? And then God goes on to remind David about the wild, free part of God. I never lived in a house. And the whole time I've been with the people, I always lived in a tent. And then God reminds David where he came from. Because, you know, David's had a whole long career. He's become king, and maybe he forgot where he came from. He's just David from the sheep herders. Took you from the pasture. From following the sheep. Be prince over my people Israel. And I've been with you wherever you want. You see, suddenly David is being told that it isn't David who's arriving. It isn't David who's accomplishing. It's God's purpose being accomplished in him. I'm going to talk about Jesus today. I, I want you to focus here on David. I want you to see. What's arriving at Christmas isn't just a baby, it's a purpose. It's God's purpose. And it's been going on a long time. The incident with David is about a thousand years before Christmas. A thousand years. God's already looking ahead. Next thing God says is, the Lord will make you a house, David. 
Your house and your kingdom will be made sure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Wow, what a turnaround. Remember how this started? David, out of the goodness of his heart, was going to build a, a temple for God. And now it's God saying to David, hold on, I'm going to be the one who's going to build. I'm going to build up your line into a home for everyone. Now, it's God saying to David, hold on, you aren't thinking big enough. You're thinking about a temple? going to last, what, a few hundred years? I'm dealing with the whole of human history. I'm shaping the whole of human history. I'm going to build a house, not out of cedar or bricks. I'm going to build it out of people. A line of generations is going to last forever, and that's where I'm going. And Christmas is where that purpose is arrived. Well, Christmas is coming in a few days, isn't it? And I wonder if you're ready. I wonder if you're ready. Do you remember when you were a kid and counted down the days? Remember that? Counted down the days. Those last days were so painfully long. Remember special things? Every year, our family used to go to one of the first shopping malls in the whole country. And they would have a department store there, which no longer exists, you know, like the temple. And, and, and there would be this amazing line, you know, train set up. Trains would go around and around and around. And we'd bake cookies and decorate them. Well, we counted down days. And it seemed like forever to the Christian sky. God's been counting down a thousand years. A thousand years. 36,500 days. I'm not accounting for leap years. That's how long God's been faithful to David's long. David wanted to build a, a building. God insisted on creating everything and binding together God's people in love. David wanted a big building. God built something bigger than David ever imagined. And this is the signature thing about God. It's always bigger with God than you ever thought possible. Always bigger than you ever imagined. We like to wrap things up, put them in a box, to find them, build a house for them. And when we've been doing it for a while, we say, oh, that's our tradition. Or, this table is 100 years old. It's an antique. And we think that makes it permanent. But God says, Only God's purpose is permanent. I think we often come to Christmas so late with our customs that we mistake for Christ. We're concerned about the wrapping, but we miss the most important thing. It's what Mary said. What the angel says to Mary, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. That's why we're struggling right now. We have big problems. We have big issues. A lot of us have given up. A lot of us have given up. We just had the highest turnout in election history in America. 30% of eligible voters didn't vote. 30%. Because they think it doesn't make any difference. I think this is why we're having this big surge of virus cases. Because People went along, they stopped wearing masks, they stopped doing the things that prevented the spread because they didn't think it was making a difference. It turned out it was. Reminds me of the snow cloud ride that came over the other night. There was so much snow in our driveway, I bet, and yours too. And, and he did what he knew to do. He looked at it and backed up his pickup truck with a big yellow cloud, and he plowed up the side of that driveway, and he got almost to the end of the house before he got stuck. And he stuck there, and he backed up, and plowed into this big pile of snow again. And then he tried to back up, and it turned out he was stuck and it took his 45 minutes to get on the And then he just looked at the pile of snow, Said, there's nothing I can do about that. And took 
cross. It was too big for him. He gave up. Do you feel that way? Do you feel like you just can't push anymore? Then stop pushing. Stop pushing. Well, I hear you did. If I stop pushing, there's still a big pile of snow. That's true. Sometimes the answer is to back off. The answer for that pile was not to keep pushing, it was to back off. And it turned out it was to pull that pile back a little bit at a time. He gave up, but of course, the snow did get moved. It wasn't pushed. It had to be pulled back. It just took back enough, long enough to figure that out. To be open to new ways, different ways. Look at the story of Mary. Mary is a king like David. She's a peasant girl. Historians tell us that she might have been about 14 years old. You know what 14 year old girls are like? They care about all kinds of things, some small, some big. Maybe she cared about the inequality of their time. Her song talks about the hungry being fed and the rich being empty. At the same time, Maybe she cared about the talk of the well, what some pop star said on Twitter. In the midst of Mary's day, an angel appeared. Now, I don't know how you imagine angels. In the Renaissance, they imagine them with wings. And then we have all kinds of other pictures. This is how I imagine I imagine like the biggest, meanest bouncer you've ever seen at a bar. Guy in a black t shirt with tattoos all up and down his arms and just scowls at you for no reason and has a, a, a ring in his ear and he's big. And the reason I imagine an angel like that is because <clears throat> there's the thing angels almost always do when they first come to somebody and it's this they say, Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Now, I think that the first thing you said when you saw somebody was, don't be scared. You must look pretty scary. You know, when I see somebody, nobody's scared of me. I don't say, don't be scared. I say, Merry Christmas, or hi, how are you, or something. What about you? Do you have to say, don't be scared when you see somebody? No, of course not. So that's what the angel says, don't be scared. Don't be scared. The angel tells this kid then the worst thing that can happen to a 14 year old unmarried girl in a small town is about to happen to her. She's about to get pregnant. And God's going to do it. She's going to have a baby. Your life is going to turn over. She's going to be a mother. And there's a moment where she has to make a decision. This is the biggest pile of snow she's ever faced, the biggest obstacle her life has ever had. And what makes Mary so great? She doesn't push. She doesn't push against him. Remember what she said? Let it be to me as you say. She agrees to be part of God's purpose. Whatever that purpose would be. And she can do that because she believes nothing is impossible for God. Because she believes and she can say with her whole life, here I am. I've been talking about Jesus all along. You know, I meant to talk about others. Because what we're preparing for, what's arriving, what's coming, is the fulfillment of God's purpose. And his name is Jesus. And he asks us what we're ready to say. Here I am. The way to respond to that isn't to push, it isn't to say what you can do, it isn't to build a building, it's to simply come to God and say, Here I am. Now you're like David, so am I. You're like Mary, so am I. We all are. You get to decide. Are you preparing for presence or whatever? Are you preparing for fun or for God's future? Are you arriving at the end of Advent at Christmas or at Halloween? Are you building something ready to appreciate what God has created? That's the difference between David and Mary. David says, here's what I'm going to do. Mary says, do whatever you want. What are you saying? The temple David wanted to get built. 
not by him, but by his son. So, lastly, all of the four hundred years was destroyed by the Babylonians. A century later, a new one got built. That one lasted another four hundred years. Then the Romans destroyed it about thirty-five years after Jesus. A few hundred years later, the ruins became a mosque. Then the Israelis took over. And it's now a shrine. It's called the Wailing Wall. Just a, a little piece of a wall. That's all that's left. See, we don't know how to build permanent heavens. Nothing goes done. What's permanent is God's purpose. And that purpose got filled when a young woman said, Here I am. Just that. No push. No push. Just here I am. Came by waiting for God to accomplish God's purpose, by deciding to be part of that purpose. Every journey has a moment when you spy the end. It's not the end, but it's time to get ready for the end. Flight attendants on an airplane say, prepare for a while. Train slows and announces the station. Driving home, we turn onto a familiar street. This is the end of Advent, the time of preparation. We're almost there. Come to the sailor. Come. Every sailor knows the ring of their home harbor. Every Christian knows the sound of the Christian bell that's ringing. It calls us, come to the state. Come to the Lord. Come to Christmas. But preparing for Christmas is more than wrapping presents, putting out presents. Preparing for Christmas is taking the time to say, here I am. Here I am. So come to Christmas with Mary with the angels, with all creation. Here I am. It's time to prepare for a while. This is the end of that. And the question of Christmas is, are you going to say, here you are, Jesus, and go on pushing, or here I am, and follow as his disciple. Amen. The hymn of devotion today is In the Bleak Midwinter, number 115. <laughs>
Lord, today, we thank you for the opportunity to hear the story of Mary. May it show us the star of Christmas. May it point us toward what you really want. And for the need of another. Let's join our hearts and voices together in the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
most important announcement I have today is that our Christmas Eve service will be held on the 24th at 7 p.m. be the traditional service we have done for many years with readings of lessons and singing familiar carols, and it will begin at 7 p.m. Mid Tree is in Palmer Hall, and you can contribute there to the Capital District of Latinos. As well, if you want to make an offering to the church here today, there are places to do that at the back of the sanctuary. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I just want to announce thank you to everybody who um, uh, contributed to the Adopt Community that would be the South End Community Outreach Center. We delivered things this week, two carfuls of, of items. They were very happy. It's going to help a lot of families in the uh, capital region and our South End community. So thank you to everybody who contributed. And um, you know, again, we encourage you to continue contributing to the mint tree. The mint tree will be up through the end of January, actually, because people still need gloves after Christmas. So um, you know, thank you again to everybody. Uh, Leslie always says what a great community we have here. Everybody's always donating. So thank you very much, and um, you know, keep up the good work. Did you have something like No. Oh. Uh, and I do want to mention the beautiful flowers that so many of you donated generously towards and thank Louis for arranging them for us and helping us in that way to appreciate God in, through the beauty of what God grows. Our last song today is Here I Am. 